today it's about making a bread that is an extremely special bread and how we make it can be a very enriching, inspiring experience. I'm going to share with you how to make challah bread. And I also want you to realize that this video is tied in with four, a total of four videos to cover how we as Christians can celebrate the Feast of our Lord, the special days that he set aside, such as Sabbath, such as Lord's Supper, which is actually more of a Christian term. But these are significant events that we need to celebrate over and over and over. And so today I'm so excited to get to make challah bread with you. Hi, I'm Annette Reeder, the Biblical Nutritionist, and I, it is my joy to share with you God's recipe for excellent health. Now, I could so easily make this bread in my Bosch mixer like I do all my other bread recipes, but there's an element to making this bread that I don't want you to miss out on. And so we're going to make it by hand. I'm going to start with one and three-fourths cups of warm water. This is called a liquid measuring cup. This is for all of your liquid measurements. That may seem obvious, but if you don't know how to cook and you weren't, you, you didn't go through seven years of home ec like I did, you may not realize that. Okay, to this we're going to add our yeast. And so I'm using one and a half tablespoon of yeast. Now, if you don't have utensils, this is a wire whisk, and I love the rubber handles. Usually they're made by, oh, I think it's like Oxo, Oxo, Oxo something, I totally forgot the name. Anyway, I'll put a link to it down below. So if you don't have a well-stocked kitchen like I do, you may want to go ahead and stock up. They sell them in different sizes. I like the great big and I like the really small one. All right, so this is starting to work. To this, I'm going to add just a little bit of honey to get the yeast starting to work. And now, you may say, that looks weird. That's a lot of honey. Actually, it's not. Actually, this is a combination of my olive oil, and I'm using one half cup of olive oil, along with my half cup of honey. Now, you can use sucanat. Sucanat's kind of getting very difficult to find in the stores in a variety that I really like because it's kind of becoming a... Um, a war in the, in the, with Sucanod, um, trademark rules and just all kinds of stuff happening there. So the really good ones, quality ones are getting hard to find. Okay, so I mixed in the sweetener. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the salt to this mix. And apparently it wants to stick to the bowl. So I'm using one tablespoon, which is quite a lot of salt, but this is going to make two really big loaves. Now, so one tablespoon is equivalent to three teaspoons. So if you ever read three teaspoons and you're like, okay, one, two, three, you can just do one tablespoon. All right. Now to this, we're going to add four eggs. Now when you crack open eggs, you don't want to crack them all in the same bowl. You want to crack them one at, one at a time in a separate bowl, just in case you get a bad egg. When I worked at a Baptist camp as a teenager, which I loved. We were down at the lake and <laughs> it was an incredible time. Um, I had to help in the kitchen one day and I had to make, I had to crack open enough eggs to feed 300 people scrambled eggs. I didn't eat those eggs because mm, that was not a good thing. Uh, okay, so I've mixed in my eggs. I'm just going to get, now because I'm using my freshly milled flour, I don't use white flour in my kitchen. I don't use any flour that you buy in the store because I like all of the nutritional value that God put in the grain of wheat. I am not anti-wheat, all right? There is a lot of misconceptions out there, a lot of bad teachings, and I don't agree with them. And so you're welcome to use whatever flour uh, suits your fancy, and that's fine. If you do buy the liquid measuring cups, I really like three of them. This, I have the one cup, the two cup, and the four cup. And it just works really well in the kitchen. All right, so here's my freshly milled flour. Now, I just milled this, so I don't really want to pack it down because then I'll have dry bread. So I'm going to go ahead and start with four cups of flour. And as you know, I could do this so much quicker in my Bosch mixer, but I'm not. I'm doing this on a purpose. Now, please stick with me because this purpose is very important. Now, eventually, my wire whisk doesn't really work well, so I'm going to switch to my fork. I'm just going to start mixing this in. And I'm wearing a nice dark colored shirt, and maybe by the end it may not be dark color anymore. I tend to get kind of messy in the kitchen, so I may be wearing a white shirt by the end of this. Okay, I just want to blend this up. And it's pretty much just a cake batter right now. 
but I do want to make sure it's all whisked together very well. Because I'm using my freshly milled flour, I am gonna go ahead and add just a bit of gluten to my bread, some vital wheat gluten, just so I can get a softer rise so it's not quite as dense as some of my other breads that I make. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that because that quantity will count towards my flour. All right, so let's add some more flour. I'm just kind of scooping and then scraping off. I'm not packing it down. I'm not tamping it on the counter. All of those would cause me to have a lot more flour than I want in my bread. Now I told you there's a significant reason why I want you to do this by hand, so hang on, I am going to get there. I just need to mix this up for you. If you have not watched my how to make whole wheat bread, you really need to catch that video. I go into a lot of details why I use the different ingredients that I do. Okay, we are starting to get a good texture here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this to the counter and I'm gonna need a lot more flour, but I'm going to knead it in. Kind of a double knead in that sentence. <laughs> All right, let's roll up the sleeves and let's get busy. When I visited Israel on my second trip, we did it as a mission trip. And we went there to plant in the center of Jerusalem a biblical foods prayer garden. So that meant we went and planted the seven foods that are listed in Deuteronomy that would be the promise, the foods that would, they would be waiting for them in the promised land. Okay, so you can see I've got kind of just a glob, but the more I knead this, the more it's going to turn into just a beautiful loaf of dough. As you flip this dough, and as you twist it, and as you punch it down, and as you turn it, I want you to think about all the people in your life that you can be praying for. What about the people, what about your neighbors? Who can you be praying for with your neighbors? Who can you be praying for in your family that's maybe someone's just kind of rubbing you the wrong way. Of course, it's your option to get upset. Um, no one can make you upset. You choose to get upset, which we talk about in our coaching calls. Who can I pray for in my church? And each time you turn it, think of another person that you can just lift up the prayers to the Lord about. What about your family? What's going on right now in your family that you could pray for? Do you have sickness? Do you have a job loss? Do you have just strange strange communication happening and you can't identify it. Um, Lord, I just pray right now for everyone watching this video. I just pray for your hand on them. I pray for you to show yourself, to reveal yourself to them in such a mighty, mighty way. Lord, as you know, this message is about your love. This message is about... It's not about food at all. It's all about your love and the salvation that you brought to us, that you offer each one of us. So just keep kneading that dough. And as you can see, I have now taken a glob of ingredients and turned it into just the most beautiful loaf of dough. I'm going to cover it up with a, a lightly moist towel. I'm going to keep it warm and we're going to let it double in size. While we're waiting for our challah bread to rise, I wanted to go ahead and share with you how to make a delicious butter to put on top. So this is our honey butter. I have these recipes of different flavored butters in our satisfied cookbook. And you can definitely, we'll put a link to that down below. It's all about making bread and just different things to do with your bread and all of that. So I'm doing one stick of butter. And to that you would add, it's pretty much a preference, either one fourth a cup or one half a cup of honey. And then you have to add the special ingredient, which would be cinnamon. All right, so let me get this honey out of this jar here. Now, it's almost time for my strawberries to be totally, whoops, <laughs> that's not my cinnamon. That's for the challah bread. Now, let me find my cinnamon. Um, it's always important to know which end of this to open because there's been many times that I have opened the wide end and poured it in. <laughs> yeah, that was way too much. So you definitely want the sprinkle in. Just put in just a little bit of cinnamon and that is perfect. 
So like I was saying, if I was doing this um, next week, my strawberries will be a lot more um, producing then, and I would make strawberry butter, which is another recipe that you can make. I have it in the Satisfied Cookbook. All right, so let's just blend this up. All right, and it's good. Oh, yeah, that is super creamy. I've done it by hand, but it just doesn't always mix as well as it does when I use my my handy blender. So there we have it. It's It looks as good as some of the restaurants, but you control the ingredients, so you control your family's health. All right, so we'll put that on our challah bread as soon as it's ready. Now comes the fun part. I let it pretty much double. Because it's freshly milled wheat, it's gonna be more dense. So really, if I had time today, which I kind of don't, I would let it rise a lot longer, uh, but I need to get going with this video. All right, so let's just take it out of this bowl. And what I need to do is from this half of the dough is to kind of shape it a little bit into a round circle. And I'm then going to cut it, cut it into six pieces and just gonna kind of make a rectangle out of this and then cut myself six strips. Okay, so I just kind of got me a rectangle there. And so I'm just gonna make six strips. There's one, it's almost like making, you know, those pretzel sticks or the bread sticks that you get at some of the restaurants. There's three, there's four, and then there we have six. Okay, so let me just flip the camera around so that you can watch me braid these rolls because this is where it gets really fun. I decided not to show you how to braid bread <laughs> because I have realized I need a lot of work on braiding bread and with six strands. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint the bread with some egg wash. This is the yolk and the white blended together. I don't really want that pocket there, okay? And then we're gonna top it with some a blend of some seeds. A lot of times they will, um, in the Jewish homes, they will top it with some kosher salt, which would really be a great taste to it, or poppy seed. But what I wanna share with you is just, I have a great blend of seeds here that I keep in the, in the refrigerator. It just has my poppy, it has my sesame seed, it has flax seed, it has some sunflower seeds, all blended in together. And it just makes a beautiful topping. This I can do right. The braiding, okay, there's room for improvement there. All right, so there you go. Be sure and catch my blog about why we should actually, you know, make challah bread, what it symbolizes, because I've got a lot of teachings in there and a lot of scriptures. So right now I'm just sharing with you how to make it. All right, let's get this in the oven. Okay, so this time, the second loaf, as you know, we make two loaves because it represents the double portion that God provided on Friday so that they wouldn't have to cook or worry about food on Sabbath. So this time I'm going to braid four of them, four braids together, because the six just really didn't work for me. All right, so I think I can do four. And you know what, it, all that matters is it's gonna taste delicious. So I'm gonna take this over two, and these are a little bit thicker than my last batch. I'm just gonna keep taking this over two like that over two like that and yeah i can do a four strand loaf i think i'm going to forget about all that those six strands all right i'm going to stretch that out just a little bit and pull that over like that and there yes i can do a four strand loaf not a six strand loaf now let me get the egg white and we'll coat that and then top it off with some seed I said egg white, but I really meant egg wash. This just really gives it a beautiful color when it bakes. All right. Now, I really wanna quickly go through the ingredients and I want you to understand the symbolism. So we have basically seven ingredients in challah bread. And so the eighth ingredient is the prayer that pulls it all together. Seven ingredients real quick is the water, symbolizes salvation and cleansing. We have the yeast, which symbolizes growth and expansion. And as we pray for our family and our friends and, and just see their faith grow as well, we get to see the effect of that yeast. 
Eggs represents life, praying for life for your kids, for your family members. The oil represents the anointed, and those who are in Christ Jesus are anointed. You already have the anointing. The honey represents the provision. There was honey provided during the famine in Egypt and also during the in the promised land. It was waiting for them. Salt represents the covenant that we have with our Lord Jesus Christ. And flour, Jesus is the bread of life. He represents the wheat. And so just always think about the ingredients. Talk about this with your family. And see, I can braid with four strands, obviously not with six. All right, let me put this one in the oven and we'll get to the next step. So here we have our challah bread. It looks delicious and I've already tasted a sample. It is delicious. So we'll have one loaf tonight with dinner and I'll save the next loaf for tomorrow. We're actually gonna be traveling so I'm gonna use it to make sandwiches out of. Just, I just wanna encourage you, make some challah bread, pray over your family, do it by hand. Take time to really knead into your family life, both physically and spiritually. I'm Annette Reeder, the Biblical Nutritionist, and it's always my joy to serve you God's recipe for excellent health. And I pray this bread blesses you in more ways than you can imagine. Thanks for watching.